In this lecture, we'll introduce some basic circuit elements that are commonly used to control the voltage and current in electric circuits. We'll review the symbols that are typically used to represent these elements in circuit diagrams, and we'll show how to use conservation of power to solve for an unknown current or voltage in a simple circuit that contains these elements. Well, a simple voltage source in an electric circuit is an element that provides a predetermined voltage drop across its terminals. The symbol for a voltage source looks like this, where the voltage across the terminals is equal to V of T, and it has a specified positive-negative polarity that's shown within the symbol. Now, an example of a common voltage source would be just a simple battery, which might provide V of T equal to 1.5 volts, 6 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, or some other predetermined voltage across its terminals. It's important to keep in mind that this model is an ideal approximation, though, and most voltage sources will have some limits to their capability to provide the specified voltage. But for nearly all of the circuit models that we'll consider, we won't be concerned with that. But it's important to keep that in mind when you're dealing with real-world circuits. Well, a simple current source in an electric circuit is an element that provides a predetermined current through its terminals. The symbol for a current source looks like this where the current through the terminals is equal to I of T and the direction is specified by the arrow within the symbol. So in this case a current of I of T would flow from terminals B to A when these terminals are hooked up into a more complicated circuit. Now as with voltage sources, current sources will always have some limits on their ability to provide the specified current, but for nearly all of our circuit models we won't be concerned with that. Well, the voltage supplied by a voltage source will sometimes be determined by the voltage somewhere else in a circuit. So if we have some circuit that has a voltage across two terminals or across two different positions within the circuit, and we call that voltage V of S, we may have a voltage source whose voltage would be some function of V sub S. Now, for voltage-controlled voltage sources, we use a different symbol. Instead of a circle, we'll use this diamond but we'll still indicate the polarity of the voltage source with the minus and plus sign within the symbol. Now the most common situation is one for which the source voltage is proportional to the voltage somewhere else in the circuit and that's what we've shown here with this proportionality factor mu. If for instance mu was equal to 4 and this voltage V sub S was 3 volts, then V would be equal to 4 times 3 volts, which would be 12 volts. Well, it's also possible for the voltage provided by a source to be a function of a current somewhere in the circuit. Again, we use a diamond symbol for the source, but in this case the voltage is a function of the current and not another voltage. Now as with the voltage controlled voltage sources, the most common situation for a current controlled voltage source is for the source voltage to be proportional to the current as is shown here with this proportionality factor R. So again, if R is equal to 2 and IS is equal to 3, then we would have a voltage 3 amps, then we would have a voltage of 6 volts for this voltage controlled or this current controlled voltage source. In this case this proportionality constant must have units of volts per amp. Well we can also have a current source whose current depends on a voltage or current elsewhere in the circuit. Here for instance is a voltage controlled current source. Again we use a diamond instead of a circle for the source symbol and the arrow shows the reference direction for the current. And as we've shown here, in most situations, the current will be proportional to the controlling voltage in this case. And here, we've shown the proportionality constant to be G. Well, our final example of a controlled source is a current-controlled current source. Here, the current supplied by the source is proportional to some controlling current, and the proportionality constant we've used in this example is beta.
Well now let's look at an example of a circuit that contains a current controlled voltage source and let's use the conservation of power principle to solve for the unknown current I0. Well if we're going to use the conservation of power principle the first thing we'll do is write down an expression for the total power in the circuit. Now I'll do this with many elements. We have one, two, three, four, five, six elements in the circuit. So to keep track, I'll put a little check by each one as I write down its contribution to the power. So the first one we're going to put down would be this. So we've got three amps going into the negative terminal of 10 volts. So that'll be negative 30 watts. That's that one. Now let's do this. We've got a current source and it says it has six volts and the currents in this direction coming through the negative terminal of our voltage polarity. So that would be negative 6 times 2. So that's negative 12 watts. So let's do this element. So now we've got 8 amps flowing in this direction which is through the negative terminal of this 4 volt voltage supply. So that's going to be negative 8 times 4 or negative 32. The next element we'll do is this one. We've got 9 amps flowing in this direction through some device and the voltage across the device is 12 volts with a polarity that has the negative on the left, the positive on the right. So that's going to be negative 9 times 12. So that's negative 108. And then we have the power associated with this current controlled voltage source. And so we have 11 amps coming through the positive side. So that's going to be a positive power. And it'll be 11 times 8 IX. So that'll be 88 I X. And then finally we have the element that has the unknown current. So we have 6 volts and a current of I0 coming through the positive terminal so that'll be positive 6 I0. So that's an expression for the total power. Now we've got the unknown current that we need to solve for but there's also this current I X. Well let's see here is I X in our circuit and that is the current through this branch which is supplied by this current source which is providing a current of 2 amps. So Ix would be equal to 2 amps which would make 88 times 2 or 176. So this total power is negative 30 minus 12 minus 32 minus 108 plus 176 add all of those up and we'll get a value of negative 6 and then we have the term with the unknown current plus 6 I0 and by conservation of power that has to be equal to 0. So that's a fairly straightforward equation to solve and we find that our unknown current is 1 amp.